The UN has ruled the federal government should allow the return of two stranded Australians who brought their case before the organisation's Human Rights Committee. It effectively found Australia is in breach of international law due to the arbitrary caps on airline travel, which has prevented citizens from returning home. For more, I'm joined by Kim Rubenstein, who's a professor of constitutional and citizenship law at the University of Canberra. She helped bring the case to the UN. Kim Rubenstein, thank you for your time. How significant is this? ruling can these two men and their families now return to Australia so it is significant Karina because this is actually an interim measure so the committee has accepted the application from the um, uh, the authors of the communication and they've said given that they have to deliberate over that um, particular application about the right of free movement that the UN committee has an opportunity to provide an interim measure which is about facilitating those two Australians immediate return to Australia. You brought this case to the UN along with Geoffrey Robertson QC. What was the argument you made? So my involvement, which is a really interesting part of this, Karina, is that because this is an international forum, the UN Human Rights Committee requires the parties to exhaust their domestic remedies first. So my role here was to actually provide a memorandum of advice to say that they have effectively exhausted their remedies because there are no immediate remedies available in Australia, which speaks to the absence of citizenship protection under our constitutional system. There's no explicit um, reference to citizenship rights. And so in order to be able to apply domestically to say that the Australian government is breaching citizenship rights, there would have had to have been an argument about an implied constitutional protection within our constitution, which would have taken over three years to be resolved. So that, um, according to earlier jurisprudence, means that UN Human Rights Committee says that is effectively like exhausting your domestic remedies. And once that was in place, that then enabled the applicants to say, therefore, Australia needs to be judged according to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which this committee has says we're providing an interim measure to protect that right while we make that determination. So could the ruling pave the way for more Australians to return home, of which there are more than 30,000? Yes, so essentially Australia now has to respond to that uh, interim measure. And what is effectively reminding the Australian government is that it has responsibilities under the constitution under quarantine to be able to implement their safe return in a way that also is taking into account the real health needs of the community. And ultimately what is underlying this um, decision is the fact that this has been a disproportionate um, waiting on, um, on health or in a way in which the government could, have, could do more to ensure that there's a proper balance between the protecting Australian citizens' right of return and enabling more quarantine positions to be set up, which the federal government clearly has under Section 51 of the Constitution. It could invest money in enabling more quarantine places and areas to be set up. As Australia shut its international border last year, we heard it was likely that it was against our human rights not to be able to leave the country. So yes. was that also tested in part of this ruling? So no, that isn't. And it's an interesting point, Karina, because it is another part of the legal issues under uh, un, uh, essentially relevant here. There is another part of the framework which is preventing Australian citizens from leaving without a permit. And I think that there are very real questions about those measures at the moment under the Biosecurity Act that are disproportionate to the act that enables that per, um, permit to be given. So I think there are some real legal cases likely ahead where individuals individuals who are prevented from leaving can really argue that the current permit framework is unlawful under not only the Biosecurity Act itself, but also this principle of freedom of movement, which is um, essential to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The federal government is now talking about allowing vaccinated Australians to return home without having to do hotel quarantine. How soon would you like to see that happen? Well, I think this um, whole experience is one where the balance needs to be achieved between protecting the interests of the greater community as well as Australian citizens who have been abroad. So if the health um, recommendations will show that it is possible for people who are vaccinated who are not a, a threat to the community to self-isolate, um, then that is obviously a more appropriate balancing act that the government can support and I would highly encourage that to be done. Kim Rubenstein, really good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Karina.